Hello, everybody. Today, we are joined by the lovely Indy Neverett, who has uh, starred, well, not starred, but been casting in both the CW show, Superman and Lois, and 13 Reasons Why, the Netflix series. And today, we get to talk with her and learn some more about her. Hello, Indy. Hello. Um, so, I figured this would be a fun way to start this out, but I'm sure you've heard of the game Two Truths and a Lie. Yes. Yes, I have. All right. So I figured we should start out with this. Okay. So I'm going to give you a moment to come up with two truths and a lie. I will okay. see if I can decipher, and I will do the same. Okay. 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 I have one. I have been to a different schools. My favorite dog growing up was a Rottweiler named Gidget that I would ride like a horse. And I can wakeboard competitively. Oh, all of those are so detailed. Yeah, they are. <laughs> that makes that hard. I might say that the lie is that you went to 11 different schools. No, that's that's true. Oh, which one's a lie? That I can wakeboard competitively. I can't wakeboard for shit. <laughs> <laughs> I look around. <laughs> yeah. No, my which... dad was a Marine. So I lived in multiple different cities growing up, like Seattle, North Carolina, Texas, um, California. And then within California, my mom loved having new houses like every three years. <laughs> so she would like move. And so we'd move to a different part of town. And so I'd end up going to like a different elementary school, like halfway through. It was really crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I thought I did a lot. I had to switch middle schools like twice. So yeah. yeah. It's uh, weird. It okay. is going into a new school. Mm -hmm. Let's see. My teachers in a lie. Okay. I I won a beauty pageant in 2011 when mm -hmm. I was 10 years old. Okay. My favorite animal are crocodiles. Croc, yes. <laughs> okay. And the, be last, the last one is growing up my nickname because mm -hmm. my name is Isis. Was a size baby. Oh my god. Okay. First of all, if it's the lie is crocodiles, uh -huh. you'd be so upset. <laughs> but I think I would say if it is I size baby, you've got a very humor filled family, and I respect it. Beauty pageants. Am I allowed to ask questions? Of course. Okay. 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 With the beauty pageant, what did you guys have like a talent? Uh, no. So, well, there was like a speaking segment and stuff, but there really wasn't a talent section for it. Okay. Um, it was it was called uh Miss Wheelchair Virginia. So every state has their own wheelchair edition of basically like Miss Virginia or Miss California or Miss Mississippi. Yeah. So, they also had a branch of it called Little Miss Wheelchair, Virginia, okay. and that is what I competed in. Okay. You were very specific about that, so I don't think that that's the lie. Okay. But why, why, I feel like it's crocodiles. Is it crocodiles? It is. Spit! I love crocodiles. I do, I do think they're amazing. They're just I, no, pandas. Right now, I'm on a huge panda kit. Ooh. Mm hmm I can see that. I can see that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, a thousand percent. Pandas if, are... Huh? I'm just talking to myself. I just said pandas uh, are... If, um, in a world where you are put in charge of a country, okay. what three types of animals would you choose to be your trusty advisors? What three who? Types of animals. Okay. So you can't have humans. 
without humans. Yes. My trusty advisors. First of all, cats. I'm sorry to say it, but cats are a very good judge of character. Uh -huh. If I have somebody over at my house and my cat does not like them, they go. They're not on the back. Uh -huh. That's cat. fair. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, listen here. Something's off about you. Um, I would say cats, because I feel like that might branch into like all cats, like cheetahs and lions, uh -huh. but I'll say, I'll say house cats for now. Um. trusty advisors I feel like the mindset like how you I'm gonna go with panda as well because I feel like the mindset that they would have is that they're very relaxed they'd be able to like whenever you're hot and heavy and angry about something they'd be able to calm you down and be like listen this is what this is what it is this is the honest truth exactly and I think I would need a snake so basically just the whole cast of kung fu panda <laughs> <laughs> a snake I, or a cricket one of the two but i would say snake for now because i feel like they would be able to give no yeah i'm gonna say snake panda and a cat i don't know how the hell they would all get along but <laughs> well no because a snake would probably eat the cat we'd feed them both mice and okay. give the panda massive amounts of bamboo that's fair yeah so they don't try but, and kill them. yeah that would be very bad if they tried to eat the owner yeah which i feel like happens yeah it does so. see well y'all yeah, i respect all those decisions i would have gone with panda yes. a white bengal tiger because I think they're absolutely beautiful and majestic, and I feel like they would be great to have. And a horse. Why a horse? Because I feel like they have been around longer, and they yeah. are a bit more wise about certain things. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. It's either that or an owl, because owls are apparently very wise. Yeah, it's funny. I don't know where that comes from, because it's like they can't talk. They just have <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, like okay, you asked one question, <laughs> but yeah, I take it. I take it. And um, going back to you know some of the earlier days and acting and stuff like that, or before you started that, what was something that you feel like really sparked your interest in it, and kind of what was your first exposure to that career field? Ooh, um. I have a very young mom and mm -hmm. so um she solely raised me and my older brother and then whenever I was seven my younger brother but she grew up loving movies but nobody in my family is in the industry or anything mm -hmm. like that so it was not this like we love it for the cinematography or we don't we didn't know any like buzzwords like that and so she would put on these films like funny girl or gladiator or um moulin rouge and i was a really young kid and i remember i'm was a very sensitive kid and i still am and so i feel mm -hmm. things deeply and so being raised by her watching these films i remember um we went to go see The Greatest Showman. Granted, that was a little bit later in my career and I had already known what I wanted to do, but it's the best example of where you're sitting in a theater and you kind of just get chills all over your body and you're like, this tells a story. Um, and I remember looking at the screen as a kid, very weirdly at Russell Crowe, which is so crazy because it's like, people are like, who do you look up to? And I'm like, Russell Crowe. And they're like, why? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> it, it just makes sense to me. Um, where the things that he made me feel as a kid was like deep understanding. Um, and so it was interesting because I felt represented by that, by the loss that the character has to go through, um, by the sense of like love and friendship and everything like that, that was within that film, even though it's a very adult film, I felt those as a kid. So that kind of sparked me as a child being like, oh, I want to know more about the fact that like, I could completely represent another person or I can become a different person or 
like I would watch Twilight a lot and whenever I put on a ring like on this finger like Bella did I'm letting you know I would go to school and I was Bella nobody could talk to me <laughs> I got to <laughs> that person so knowing that I could do that I really love becoming other people and becoming in people's brains and understanding why they do what they do and just like a deep understanding of it um yeah so I think those films as a kid really sparked that and you know you kind of mentioned Russell Crowe being one of those iconic actors that you looked up to growing up were there any others that really spoke to you as I said it's funny like Robert Downey Jr. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, Hugh Jackman they're all men um it's funny yeah they're all men Matthew McConaughey um I never really was like a princess kid or we did watch Disney movies growing up um uh-huh. my favorite was Moana but it just kind of was this they these characters that they played had such a strength in them um which now we can use words like masculinity or anything like that but it was just for me as a kid not understanding anything like masculinity or femininity or anything like that it was very much so just a strength that this these characters had or an intelligence like Iron Man or an intelligence like Sherlock Holmes that Robert Downey Jr. played that um I kind of was like I know how to do that like I'd be building (laughs) I would feel like Sherlock Holmes like it's funny now that I think back at it but I, I fully as a kid that was the thing because you're so funny talking about some of your earlier childhood but because you it's kind of like you were not a very feminine child what were some of your other hobbies that you kind of like to do growing up I on both sides of my family um but specifically on my mom's side her sister so my aunt um had two kids and my uncle is extremely with like boating and wakeboarding and kneeboarding and dirt bikes and like shooting in the backyard and doing (laughs) backflips off of the deck and so uh, it was funny I would be like my cousin TJ was in high school whenever I was like a little little kid and so all of his friends would be over and I would be with them they doing backflips into the pool or shooting guns in the backyard or riding dirt bikes um so I would say that most of my hobbies as a kid was kind of like these extreme things I remember watching this skateboarding movie and really trying to learn how to skateboard still to this day I'm really trying but my body is <laughs> it's not built for it at all but I still try um I really loved um, collecting a lot of things as a child. I would have these like Walmart plastic drawers filled with rocks for no reason. I loved collecting rocks. And now that I'm older, I collect crystals. (laughs) I'm like, hey, (laughs) fancier and nicer and they're prettier, but yeah. Yeah, and they don't look like random potatoes that you find in the dirt. (laughs) Yeah, fuck it. I mean, hey, let's just get a little... Well, bugs oh, there are crystals, yeah. I grew up uh, with an older brother and mostly male cousins. Mm-hmm. So they did all the physical outside stuff. Whereas for me, I my brother got me into like professional wrestling, like watching that. Yeah. So at age seven, that's what I was watching on TV instead of all the little cartoons they had and it came on every night at like 8 p.m to like 10 p.m uh and there was that in video games and video oh. games were the other thing you got me into mm-hmm. um but yeah so i totally understand that because at first i was very much a girly girl my room was pink and purple with dora and princesses and the backyard again and then that very soon we disappeared around age yeah. eight and nine. Yeah. yeah. Um, My brothers would play Call of Duty. I still play Call of Duty to this day. Yep. Where I'm playing The Last of Us right now. I Twitch stream. I love playing video games. And Ooh. so I, figured I was like, oh, I'd love to ha- like show people this. Um, And there's a platform for it now. And so I started doing it and it's been so much fun. The community is amazing. Um, but similar to you when I would leave to go live with my dad I would come back and my room would be completely redecorated with like zebra stripes and like pink 
bing bags and I'm like mom uh, I want to wear uh, like shorts <laughs> and I'm like long sleeves and if you stick me in a dress so I will fight you <laughs> like this is not how this is gonna work um but slowly but surely she'd be like what about this sparkly shoe and I'm like absolutely not what about this converse like please don't uh-huh. now moving on to current day in mm-hmm. the Netflix career uh mm-hmm. you work at and I guess you still are on CW's Superman Lois as Sarah, yeah. which is a huge deal. Congratulations. And I don't know how much you know about that universe, but you know CW, they've been doing a whole bunch of the DC shows for a while now. So like The Flash, they had the Green Arrow, which was then moved on to just Arrow. And then The Flash. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, I might have already said it. Sorry. I meant Supergirl. Yes. That was the other one. Um, were, did you have any kind of knowledge about any of the lore before you were cast, or was it one of those things you kind of got exposed to once you took the job? No, I was I was fully aware of those shows. Um, mm-hmm. but I think I had to let it go going in, um, because I would have lost my mind. <laughs> um, there's so much. There's well, in the sense that in middle school, I watched the arrow like consistently like it was it was it was borderline crazy because I would restart it and restart it and restart it and restart Uh it and so I think I had the beginning of the season memorized I could probably draw it for you and have like a book of what happens and then whenever it happened with the flash I think I got a couple seasons in before I started hitting high school and like watching other stuff um, but I was very aware going into what it was. And it's interesting because whenever I booked the show, I thought, oh, this is what my show is going to look like. And it's not that they're a super crazy difference, but there's just something about Superman and Lois that is specific to that show. You, yes. Yeah. So it was very beautiful to go in with this idea that I thought it was going to be one thing and then watching it back and you have a completely different experience and it just makes you appreciate it in a completely different way. Most definitely. Even me, I think it was my later high school years. I definitely watched a lot of the, a lot of Vero. I think I made it to like season six and there was like eight or nine seasons at this point. I made it to season six. I think I watched like two three seasons of the flash yeah. i was imp- i was impressed by on twitter that they're still going with that i'm like oh yeah dang, how many seasons you guys make on this show oh yeah yeah, yeah. And- no they i mean i uh met um grant gustin on a flight whenever i was flying back to vancouver and um he we were it was it was really neat i i didn't like i saw him but i just didn't say anything and he turns to me and he goes, Indy, and I thought I was going to die. I was like, yeah. You know my name? What? I was like, hi. And he was like, hi, I, I, Grant, nice to meet you. I was like, hello. And he, I think you could kind of tell, like, we still had masks on, but I think my eyes were, like, popping out of my head. <laughs> um, he's like, you're on Superman and those, right? <laughs> I, I I wish I was a cool person but I just like yeah <laughs> and um, <laughs> like talking back and forth and then we get on the flight but it was so fascinating that like he even knew my name and to sit there and be like oh but he was mentioning about how I was like so how's the show going he's like yeah we just wrapped it up I just put my suit away and I was like I'm sorry the show is is done and he's like yeah you didn't know that and then I kind of felt like rude because he knew everything about my show <laughs> I had no idea oh. Ending. but yeah <laughs> the fact that like they have to hang it up but it's been nine years like that's crazy yeah. that's actually really successful for a show to go on that long absolutely so, hey um great to them for being able to pull that pull that out for that long because there are some shows that don't even make it past the first season this is very true this is very true um and you know you Currently, the most recent season of Superman of Lois is playing out right now. I believe the season finale is supposed to come out in June, if I remember correctly. Without spoiling any of this storyline, because we don't want that, are you satisfied with the way the season wraps up? Or would you, in your control, if you could, rewrite that storyline? 
No, I actually like it. Cause I think with the way that Sarah has been written for the past two seasons, I think it's a good area for her to be in. And I think in her life, it's really hard for her to let things go. And it's really hard for um, realizations to really set in. I think she's a very wise person in the sense that she can understand um, the impact that she has on people or the impact that people have on her or her relationship with her parents. But I think one of the things that she really struggles with is really letting realization set of when something's finished or when something should start or what she wants to do or appreciation. And I think this season is really when you see her in the beginning of the season, um, extremely elated and happy, especially after all the trauma that she went through last season. And I think it's a high and then now she's slowly kind of getting to a point of, okay, all of this has happened to me. I have no idea what's going on in my life. There's this boy in my life that I love, but I don't know what to do with. And there's so much going on. Um, and you finally see her get to a point where she's deciding which way she wants to go. And I think I'm really happy with the way that she goes. Character progression is a beautiful thing. When that character you play, you get to see kind of how them as a character develop and then also seeing the storyline and how it plays out with all that and it's always great when you get to be able to actually see you know a good place for them especially with ending seasons and stuff like that because sometimes you don't know if the show will be you know going off another season or another five seasons or what so it's always nice when you kind of get to get to a good a good spot without character development. No, it's be- it's a beautiful thing. And continuing on with that show, uh, if you were going to plan a heist with your fellow cast members, who would be your accomplice, your getaway driver, and your possible scapegoat if you were going to have one? This is my favorite interview ever. Okay. Okay, heist in this. Okay, getaway driver, accomplice. It was getaway driver. Mm-hmm. Accomplice. Accomplice. And a possible scapegoat. Who are you going to like take the fall for this? Okay, okay, okay. Accomplice would be Taylor, hands down. Me and her. Okay. Are- for sure. And get away with it too. Nobody would know it would be us. Um, also it would be so ironic because I'm so short and she's tall and it would be like this and it would be like the regular schmegular, you know, how like in cartoons, how it's like that. (laughs) Um, getaway driver would be Alex. That dude can drive. There was a time actually hypothetically, there was a time where he Uh got this very quickly <laughs> um <laughs> hypothetically <laughs> um alex for sure scapegoat i would say either these these three people it would be chris uh, not chrissy um sophia hasmic who plays chrissy emmanuel shrieky who plays my mom or wole parks i would choose them three because i feel like all three of them could talk themselves out of anything so it's fine oh scapegoat because legitimately when I tell you they could talk their way out of anything and the three of them together are like the three stooges they are all best friends <laughs> they all love each other they all hang out and they would equally like without even talking to each other be able to come up with like a story it would be like communication too so I would say them and they are their own person so I would say them see and also the great thing about having three people is you could do multiple heists and choose a different one for each time and there you go first of all yes yes perfect strategy you will steal about two billion dollars you'll be set for life yes there you go period i'll take it (laughs) Uh, so moving on i'm going to have you fill in the blanks for the seconds okay Never would you catch me at the mall doing blank after blank. Never in a million years would you catch me in the mall feeling bad after going to um, 
Bath and Body Works. That is a perfect way for an answer. Yeah, that place, heaven. <laughs> What's your favorite scent? I don't have one. I just walk in and I lit a candle <laughs> <at once. laughs> and then I walk out. <laughs> I don't think I've ever bought a candle from there. Actually, that's a lie. I did. I but I did buy one and it filled my whole house for like a month and a half and I didn't even light it. Holy shit. Yeah. I got a powerful candle. Yeah. I need to go back and get another one because it just finished. It was, oh, it was um something Paris champagne or it's like Paris, but it's like champagne scented. So it's like a little bit of a vanilla like vibe. Good. I don't know. I well, I like it. I don't think I've ever walked in the Bath and Body Works. I always see it in the mall, but I'm like, yeah, I don't need anything. I'm good. I'll have to go find out what that scent is. And at a later date in a future interview, let you know if I can find it. Yeah. Uh, and moving on to your everyday life currently, what are five things in your everyday life currently that you don't feel like you could live without? Ooh, I'm looking at it right now. My record player and my my records. So record player and record um my PC, which I built in this one version. Um, uh incense. <laughs> um Earl Grey tea and cozy sweaters. Those are all perfect answers. And now I gotta ask about the record player and records. What type of music are you getting records for? Ooh, I got a record player when I was 16 and it all I I haven't really bought any for myself yet. They were fully gifted mm-hmm. to me. Um, but the three I play the most is Lauren Hill, uh, Miss Education, um, Erica Badu Baduism, and Bob Marley, um, and the Whalers. Ooh. Or Amy Winehouse. I also have um, ABBA. All good choices. Thank you. Uh, that's because I have a somewhat of a, of a vinyl collection upstairs in my room that I've been working on since like 2021. Although completely different genres, as you can imagine. Yeah. So it's like mostly alternative and metal records. Oh, so, yeah. uh, yes. So. Yeah. Right now, I have like nine million battle men's finals. I have a wonderful album. I got Gay Seeker. They're okay. a pretty chill band. Yeah. And Escape the Fate. That was the other one. Yeah. I need yeah. to, I need to, uh, add to my Escape the Fate because they're lacking as far as my vinyl records go. But yeah, yeah, I just need to buy a record player. It's been on my to-do list, and I haven't done it yet. They have some. I, I got a really cheap one from Urban Outfitters. Um, But at least that's where, that's like, it's called One by One. Um, mm-hmm. I recommend it. It's worked a really long time. Perfect. I'll have to look into that. Um, now, mm-hmm. we're going to step in on your budget list, perhaps. If you could star in any movie franchise, past or present, which one are you dying to star in? Movie franchise. Movie. Pirates of the Caribbean, hands down. That would be a good one. Oh, yeah. Me and a corset, done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I support this decision. And finally, because uh, we're already halfway through 2023. Are there any particular things you're looking forward to in the remainder of the year, either professionally or personally? I would actually say seeing my little brother uh, start his sophomore year of high school. Because that's how old I Ooh. was in LA. That's amazing. Yeah. This has been a lovely interview with our lovely guest, Andy Neville. Uh, thank you, Wendy, for taking time to sit down and do this today. And you can make sure you follow all of Andy's social links in the description below of this video. And until next time.